Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting cruise review. Today we're checking out the Mariner of the Seas on a four night voyage from Port Canaveral, Florida down to Perfect Day at Coco Cay and Nassau, Bahamas. Check-in was uh, pretty easy, uh, kind of an older terminal, uh, nothing new like the terminal down in Miami that Royal Caribbean operates out of, but a uh, decent security line that moved pretty fast and was on board the ship in less than 30 minutes. I was pretty excited to get back on board the Mariner of the Seas. Last time was as a teenager, back in 2005, I believe. Uh, so pretty cool to get back on board, see what's changed. This has been amplified, so there are a lot of changes. Did see the Disney Wish in the background. That's one of my favorite ships out there. But these Freedom class ships really did change the game, mostly because of this Royal Promenade. Uh, really a cool spot, a big hub of activity on board the ships. Uh, you even have those inside cabins that have real windows that look out onto it. Uh, so pretty cool there. Uh, really great day to sail away in Orlando. And here is my cabin. So I had an ocean view cabin on this voyage. Pretty decent sized cabin. Um, obviously no balcony, but uh, plenty of space for me. Uh, I was just a single on this cruise. Taking a look at the bathroom here. Felt like the bathrooms and the stateroom was in really good shape compared to other Royal Caribbean ships I've been on in the past year or so. Uh, so I do have a few points of comparison there. Uh, seems like uh, maybe got a little bit of a refresh a little bit more recently than some of the other ships, uh, especially compared to the brilliance of the seas that was on in December. This cruise happened January, 2023. So pretty recently, if you're watching this right when I post this, Good little mini fridge there. Nice little desk to do some work. Then of course you have the two twins that make a queen bed, making things pretty comfortable. Then you have a nice little shelf behind you there as well. Had to do a spa tour. This is something I always do when I get on board. A good way to check out the spa, see if you can win the raffle or get any discounts on any onboard services. Now with all Royal Caribbean cruises, I do recommend booking as much as you can before the cruise on the app or on the website. Uh, there are a lot of discounts there. You can get unlimited dining for a big discount over what you can book on the ship. Uh, lots of good restaurants on board. Uh, I do feel like uh, since I've cruised a bunch on Royal Caribbean that the menu in the main dining room uh, gets a little boring so it's fun to try out the different restaurants especially izumi which is hibachi they also have a sushi uh, bar which has a separate menu so i went with the hibachi option on my first evening so of course they had the edamame and salad now this is very similar to the benihanas that you have on shore big dinner and a show chef's a big part of the experience uh, we had a really great one on this cruise, so really a cool experience, uh, fun to do as a family, especially if you can fill out that whole table if you have a big group. Uh, these reservations usually go pretty fast, so something to keep in mind uh, to book early uh, if you are looking to cruise. A bunch of the Royal Caribbean ships uh, have Izumi uh, with the Hibachi, but not all of them, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, definitely uh, pick and choose what ship you might want to jump on just based on that. Overall, I felt like uh, the dinner experience was great, but it was a little expensive. I think um, a little bit overpriced for what you get. Not really much of a deal compared to onshore, um, but a good experience. And then it was time for a show. Uh, really nice theater, seemed very newly redone. Uh, chairs felt like uh, they had you know, been refreshed. Uh, nothing really too broken in the theater, so great to see that. They had a really good juggler on board this cruise. That was pretty fun to watch. And then I went and checked out the ice show. Uh, so this is all included with your cruise. Studio B having some great ice shows, uh, all pretty different depending on the ship. Uh, we made it to Nassau, Bahamas the next day. I uh, got off the ship, walked around a little bit. Uh, it was a national holiday, so the places I wanted to go uh, were closed, but did find some great food um, right on the beach. So that was really, really a lot of fun. Then on board, I had another snack a little later in the day. And then it was time to sail away, which is my favorite 
activity on any ship. I uh, was watching the people that were late. There were plenty of people late on this ship. Uh, lots of fun partying going on in Nassau. So uh, always some people that don't really know the time. Uh, but it was a nice little sail away and a quick journey over to Perfect K, or excuse me, Perfect Day at Coco K uh, the next day. But wanted to try out the Italian restaurant, Jamie's Italian on board. Overall, felt like the flavor wasn't really there on this one. I really do prefer Giovanni's. Um, decent pasta, but you know, honestly, I had to add salt and a lot of flavoring to things. The short rib, you know, was completely tasteless. So that was a big bummer. Uh, the dessert, however, was amazing. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, and I was ready to get up nice and early and go grab a nice spot on the beach. Uh, so I didn't buy any water park package. Uh, you might have seen my other video with a full tour of Perfect Day at Coco Cay, so definitely check that out. Uh, we had the Enchantment of the Seas in port with us, so that's a really small ship. Uh, pretty cool to compare between the two. Um, but, you know, the water park is a little cheaper if you book it before the cruise. I think that's pretty worth it. They do have a separate beach club, which a little, little expensive, but you do get some heightened food options, so that might be an option for people as well. You also get a nice little pool uh, with an infinity view over uh, the ocean there. Um, so it was a great day, and we sailed away uh, for another day at sea uh, before we returned to Port Canaveral. This evening I returned to Izumi just to try the sushi menu uh, because it's a little bit cheaper, and I'm sick of the main dining room. Um, so got right in, had some delicious Japanese food. Really nice little bar area here. Great service. Tons of tuna. That's where you really get your value, I think. Um, had a nice little noodle dish with some steak on top as well. So you do not go home hungry here, for sure. Plenty of options. You get to choose um, you know, one starter, two of the main entrees, and then one dessert. So really pretty fantastic value there. Then the day at sea was a nice calm day, spent kind of checking out the ship, seeing what was going on here, walked around a little bit. One cool thing I saw on the Mariner of the Seas was this little bridge overlook area. Um, obviously uh, a little different now uh, post 9-11, but uh, I thought that this was pretty cool to be able to look down and see what's going on on the bridge. Um, hadn't seen this on any of the other Royal Caribbean ships. Maybe I just missed it, but great little sports deck on board as well. The sky pad being pretty unique. Not every ship has that. Of course, you have the rock climbing wall, which every ship has. Just really a great day at sea for some sailing. This being the last night of the cruise, I was a little food out, so I just went to the main dining room and tried some items on there. Uh, all these menus are changing around as Royal Caribbean cuts costs across the fleet, so this is probably a little outdated at this point, but I decided to get a steak. I know I said I was fooded out, but I was not. Um, <laughs> I definitely had a steak and then had some creme brulee. Had to check that out for sure. And then I ended my night in cruise with the Quest and then got right off cruise the next day so really great time thanks a lot for watching